Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vicky and I am from Liverpool, born and bred. Um, I work for Mayside Fire and Rescue as a firefighter. Uh, I've done that since 2017. Um, so before I tell you about that job, I'll tell you about how, um, you know, my past and how we've led to being here now in this job. Um, so I'm 34, so I came to the job quite late. Um, so in school, obviously I did all my GCSEs, um, I passed all them, and then I went to do my A-levels in business studies and physical education. I always thought that maybe physical education is a pathway that I wanted to go down. Um, alas, that didn't happen, but obviously with my job now, there's, there's elements of, of that in it. So I've always had a, an interest in, you know, physical education. I work out, I go to the gym, um, I do uh, CrossFit and things like that and, and a bit of weightlifting. So that element's always been with me when I was in school. I was in a lot of different sports teams. So I played hockey, um, tennis, netball. So I've always been quite active. Um, and then from school I went to college and I studied media studies film studies and tv and production and I always thought that maybe this is a line of work that I like because I was really interested in in films and media and I really got involved in you know enjoying the process of making you know movies and and editing and things like that um and then so from that I went to university and got a bachelor of arts with honors in media studies um, I absolutely love doing it and the biggest thing that I took from university was confidence. It gave me a lot of confidence um, in life, which is probably something that I lacked when I was younger in school. Um, I remember when I was little in nursery, um, I would always like shy away from like school plays or be sat at the back or never really wanted to be the centre of attention so university you know having to speak and do presentations in front of a lot of people really helped build my confidence um, and I think that has really helped moving forward in my life and what I do now um, as a firefighter because you have to you know you have to face the public a lot and you know they're looking to you for for help and, and guidance and support um, all the time and the organization so big and you have to speak to so many different people so although I didn't really you know I didn't use use my degree with what I intended to use it for I really still enjoyed the process of doing it and got a lot from it and learned a lot um, during my time at uni um, I stayed in Liverpool as well so I stayed close to my, my friends and family and and that was really nice so my first job was um I was just a KP in, in, in a cafe, so I was just kind of pot washing and, and waitressing, and I did that when I was in school, um, when I was 15, um, and I used to do a couple of hours on a Saturday and Sunday, and then I used to save my money up, and I used to go and treat myself, you know, after work on a Sunday before the shops closed to, to something nice, and I've kind of just stayed in hospitality for a really long time, so I did that, and then I, when I was in university, um, and college I, I always worked in hospitality so I've worked in like coffee shops and cafes and things like that and I really just enjoyed connecting with people and I think this is where the, the whole passion for wanting to help people came from um, I just enjoyed connecting with people and knowing people and seeing familiar faces and and you know learning about people and just communicating every day with with like you know new people and familiar people and I've actually made some good friends from not only my job or the jobs that I've done but also built relationships with 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 customers like who I'm now friends with who who were who were see because they were that regular that that um they just became friends um which was lovely um and then from there from hospitality um I started managing a, co a coffee shop uh, and the owner of that business also owned a lot of other businesses um, within the same area, area of Liverpool. Um, and whilst I was doing that, I went back to college and I did a, um, a qualification in, in, in massage therapy. 
And the guy that owned the business also owned a gym and they were looking for people to help out in there doing massage therapy. Again, it was just another job working with people and, you know, making people feel relaxed. You know, you don't know what kind of day somebody's had and why they're coming in. And, and you know, it's just, it's just nice to, to give yourself that time. And I think that's what people enjoyed most of all coming in for treatments and, and things like that is because it just gives themselves the time away from their busy lives just to relax and switch off and just let, you know, let me kind of do that for them. And, and that was really enjoyable. And I got a lot of job satisfaction from, from doing that. Um, and then from there, so alongside doing that, I went and did a teaching in further education. So I went back to college um, as well as working in the in the spa. I was teaching in Liverpool Community College, teaching level ones and level two um, massage therapy, um, which was really, really rewarding. Again, it was working with people. But I also met a friend uh, in that job. And after she left, I noticed on her Facebook that she'd applied for the fire service. And it's never really a job that I thought about ever doing because when I was in school, it wasn't, it, when we had careers days, it wasn't really a focus of a career day. You know, you'd have like the TA coming in or the police coming in doing talks, but the fire service was never really present at that time in um, a careers event. I think it's because at the time, the, the our service in particular didn't really re recruit for it for a long time. So they didn't feel the need maybe to, 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 to do careers events because they already had like the, you know, the firefighters that they needed to do the job. Um, but I sat down with my mum and I said, listen, I know I've worked a lot with people. Um, there's just something it's just something missing I just feel like I can do a little bit more um and with you know me always being interested in keeping fit and active and also wanting to work with people I kind of put the dots together and thought well why not why, why not just give it a go um so I applied and the process is somewhere between you know four four and six months and there's there's a lot of stages to it so um the first stage is an application and then you have to go and do a physical test um so they test like your your ability to like uh strength wise and and um and things like just various various different things that you know you might not I never thought that I would have to do you know climbing a ladder testing you know how I was with height testing how I was with confined spaces um, and as a kid I I was always quite scared of confined spaces um because when I was younger we went on a on a school trip and we did boulder um and it was it was so tiny the gaps that I was just a bit overwhelmed um but it was actually fine and I think like as I've grown up I've kind of got over a fear that I didn't really know I had because I hadn't faced it for so long so that 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 was really that was really nice to know that that wasn't going to hold me back um so after the physical, you have to do a group assessment where you have to sit with six people and in a room and kind of talk about what you know about the job and you'll be asked different questions and it, it's all about teamwork because our job is essentially all about teamwork. You never are expected to go into a fire, for example, by yourself. You'll always be with somebody else, like you have a crew of four or five or, you know, depends on the job, it could be bigger. Um, and more people are involved but you, you're never alone like in the job and I think the thought of that for me at first was quite overwhelming because obviously I didn't really know much about it but the more I read up about it and the more um I knew about the job having speaking to different people at, at you know various stages of of the process I kind of realized that you know that the whole job is about teamwork you're not expected to do anything by yourself um, so after that, you go for your interview and then you have to do a swim test after that, which is 50 metres wearing something called a dry suit, which I'd never heard of in my life. Um, I'd always just thought water wetsuit, but it's a dry suit so you can float um, because we do a lot of a lot of other uh, there's a lot of other different aspects to our job, not just not just fighting fires. 
um, and then from that we do medical and then and then I started and it was the best the best thing I've ever done. My recruit course started in August 2017 and it lasted 17 weeks and I was with 20 other recruits and um, there was four females um, and the rest of them were, were guys so it's, got, it's a really good mix nowadays there's a lot more females coming through in the job um, so on the recruit course you learn so much I was mind blown how much how much we had to learn um, because again I thought the clue was in the name it's a firefighter you just fight fires you know and then you've got the the whole uh, and you've rescued cats from trees and things like that but there's ho- there's a whole lot more to it so we did a lot of firefighter training uh, you learn how to be safe in fire in, in fire situations and um, you put under you know a bit of pressure and stress during your training when it comes to uh, your firefighting abilities um where they'll put you in a something called the firehouse and, and you won't be able to see where you're going and you you purely just dependent on 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 you on touch like all of your other senses are taken away from you you can't see anything um so you're just feeling your way around and, and you really learn to internalize what you can what you can see in your head so a room for example like how many walls it's got how many corners it's got where the doors are because the whole idea of that is is if you go if you go into a situation you want to know that you can safely get out so you have to kind of map in your mind where you are and where you're going um so that was really interesting um very hot as well but you, you get used to the heat and then we do things like water rescue so you know if people fall into the docks or or things like that we get trained on how to rescue people from from water situations um and then we do a lot of rope work as well so if people need rescuing from you know underground or above we get we get taught how to rescue people you know using different rope techniques um there's just a, a lot of a lot of different aspects of the job um such as rtc so road traffic collision so that was a big a big week that we had to do so you know rescuing people from car crashes but also how to make sure that it's safe for yourself and the person that's doing so in in that you know situation how to do it safely um and the trainers are are great like the whole process is amazing like you come away from from the recruit course with the skills that you need to really start you off um well well in 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 your career basically um and then when you get to your fire station the help is is unbelievable everybody wants to help you like you're you're new on station so every everybody wants to you know really get stuck in and and make sure that you're you're all right like on day one for example you know the, there's people sitting there like you get you waiting you're just waiting for your first job and you're nervous and you're like you don't know what you're going to go to it could be the biggest thing or it could be the littlest thing but it doesn't matter because you don't know what to expect from that day at all but everyone for me was so welcoming and and caring and just helpful and you know they want want to make you feel part of the team um which is, you know, it's, it's lovely. Um, so a typical day on our on our fire station is um, we go in, we check all of our equipment because obviously that's the equipment that we're going to be using on a day-to-day. So we we need to know what I, I want to know, that what I'm using is safe and it works. And, you know, if it's got batteries and it's charged, you know, when you have the breathing apparatus set on, that when you're going into fires, for example, that you know everything's working and the batteries are working, and you can communicate with people on the outside. Uh, so it's all, all just about making sure that your equipment and your personal protective equipment, so all your fire kit is, is safe and it's clean and it's you know ready and and, and set up for the day. Um, and then after that, we usually do some training. So we'll put together different scenarios or, or the watch managers who are in charge of us will put together different scenarios um, that'll allow us, you know, to, to build on, on, on what we already know, but also maybe, you know, throw different ideas in that we might never have thought about when we just 
we do it it's not it's not as intense as, as the recruit course but you know it's, it's good to keep your, your skill set up and, and always be training for different scenarios um so we do a lot of that we also do a lot of help with with my station i i work in the city center so we've got a lot of um high-rise buildings so a lot of you are probably aware of grenfell um that happened in london a couple of years ago um so we're really hot on on making sure that high-rise buildings are or you know how they should be everything's in place like fire safety wise and and so we go and check and go and check that everything's working so if we did get you know called out to something similar or you know not as bad we know that we can deal with with that situation safely and effectively um and, and to make sure that everyone everyone's okay you know everyone who lives there and, and and all the other you know all the firefighters that get involved in in the job so there's a lot of that. We we'll, we just do generally a lot of a lot of work with businesses as well. So we'll go out, we'll familiarise ourselves with businesses, um, just so we know that if 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 something was to, to happen, you know, you, you think about the am amount of buildings in in the city centre. There's shops, there's offices, there's student accommodation, there's restaurants, cafes, everything. So we have to go and check. And every year we've got a list of. Of places that we have to go and, and and check to make sure that they are safe and and we could work safely within them and the people that work there or live there are also safe um also as well we do smoke alarms as well so within the high rises for example or the student accommodation or the houses around the city center we go and make sure that people have smoke alarms that are fitted and that are working and, and they feel safe within their within their properties that if if something was to happen even for example if it was just someone had burnt toast or burnt the tea or whatever they know that that smoke alarm is working um so if, if, it, if anything was to escalate they will be safe and they will be able to get out and whilst we're there we give them a lot of information and, and knowledge on how to handle situations if if they were to, to come about so for example you know if you were asleep overnight and you heard your smoke alarm go off and you open the door and there was a lot of smoke you know not to try and get to try and get through the smoke like just stay in your room ring ring the fire service and, and we'll come and deal with it don't try and fight anything any fires that are, that are too out of control that you you yourself are going to get you know hit with or you know damaged by or you know put yourself in a situation that that you know you, you might not be able to to get out of safely so it's all just about protecting yourselves and we we just want to get the message across to people that you know put, put your faith in us like we're, we're going to be there so by doing the the smoke alarms and the and the home visits and the high-rise visits it just really like settles people's minds about about you know they can do something for themselves but we can also be there you know to do something for them as well to make sure that to make sure that they're safe um so that's a lot of what our, our day is you know sometimes we'll go down to the docks and we'll do some water training sometimes we get cars uh, like from scrapyards delivered to our station and we just practice cutting up cars and um various things with, like casualty care and, and and things like that and what we can do before say the paramedics arrive and what we can do to help somebody um working alongside with them we work a lot with the police as well at incidents obviously if there's you know a big incident like we we want the police to like close the roads and stuff so other people don't get harmed or you know there's not a lot of people congregating because obviously with with social media now um you do find a lot of people taking pictures and videos and, and things like that. So we want to try and keep the area as clear as possible so we can work safely and, and you know we can all do our jobs and make sure that the people that we're helping um can get out can get out safely. Um so that is that is a, a typical a typical day in, in work. Um the difference that our job makes is is you know depends on what what job you're going to it could be something like I said before really small where you're just turning up reassuring somebody that you know you've just burned upon a food and it's fine like it's absolutely fine and we just give them a little bit of fire safety advice um 
to also you know helping vulnerable people there's different houses that you might go into there's different situations um that you might see that I certainly didn't think that I'd come across you know vulnerable part vulnerable people and, and you know like part of the city that you go into where people are just you know quite poor from poor backgrounds and, and the way they live and they might need extra help but they don't know how to ask for it so if we see something that that you know concerns us we can refer these people to, to other departments who can come out and help um, help these people, you know, if, if they need if they need any help in any any way whatsoever. There's various departments in the job that can come out and, and make sure that these people are safe. Um, for example, there's a lot of hoarders, you know, that hoard um, various, you know, like old magazines or just lots and lots and lots of bits. And for us, this is this is a problem if 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 they have a fire fire in their house, for example, because that's a lot of a lot of fire load and that's a lot of stuff that can go on fire. So if we go into somewhere like that, we we want to kind of help these people and go, you know, you you know, you might be putting putting yourselves at risk. So what can we do? What can we do to help, basically? Um and that that's basically what I love about this job is is it's so diverse and so different you don't know what you're going to go into and you don't know who you're going to meet and you and you, you just every day you know you're just sitting there thinking what is going to happen today like anything could happen today and that that's what's so exciting about this job um and just meeting people from all different backgrounds and cultures and and just getting to know like your city if you know what I mean and and experiencing like part of the city that I never thought I would so when we do these visits we go to places like the cathedrals or we go to St George's Hall and we we get to see places that you know people might have never have been like into the basement or you know into the roof spaces and all the secret little passageways it's just quite interesting to see it's the side of the city that that not many not many people get to uh, get to experience and that's a really fun fun part of the job you know aside from, from, you know, helping people and putting a smile on people's faces and going to schools and doing school visits and speaking to young young people, you know, who, who potentially are the future generation of, of the fire service if they choose to do that. Um, it's nice to inspire and talk to young people and get their views and, you know, just interact and, and, have, and have a bit of fun with it and get the, you know, we get, um, people to come out and they can sit on the fire engine and, and you know just have, have a mess around and play with the hoses and yeah it's just fun it's just fun to put a, a smile on people's faces so that's a really nice nice part of the job um that that's really fulfilling and you know it's one of the best parts of the, of the job um but if if you yourselves you know have ever wanted to get into into the fire service, there's you know plenty of fire stations around Liverpool that you can go and pop into and just speak to people. Um, we've also got the fire cadets as well, um, and there's loads of information on the website so you can start the fire cadets quite young, and they'll teach you really basics, basic things about what what we do in our job now. Um, but it gives you an insight into into what you know if you wanted to progress when you could into the job um it's it sets you off you know well you know with with a bit of knowledge on it on the job itself um but speaking to people is is one of the biggest you know biggest helps that I had before I went for my um before I started going through the the recruit process I, I I went to a couple of stations and spoke to a couple of firefighters and they themselves haven't been in for that long um you know you expect to go in and find all firefighters that have been there for, for years and you know they've got all the experience under the belt and it was quite reassuring to know that there, were, there was like younger people in the job who you know they were still learning and I think in this job you never you never stop learning I've got 26 years left in this job and I don't think that I will ever ever stop learning um but it's just good it's just good to have an insight and um, from the start into you know what what the job's like from from the perspective of of someone who works in it and also being in the environment and going to visit your station will give you a feel for that and you can look around and get just get a better feel for it basically um 
so you know there's loads of information on the website as well as always you know a lot going on um on on the Merseyside website to have a look into and it gives you careers advice and you know if you wanted to apply like what what you'd want to do but also it's got a lot of information about what's going on like recent incidents and and on social media there's there's a Twitter page, there's a, an Instagram page, there's a Facebook page, and they've all got information on, on you know, all the latest incidents, you know, all the latest fire safety, all the latest campaigns that we might be running. Um, so that that's a really good tool to get an idea of, of what this job is about. Um, and, you know, it's not just about, you know, being a firefighter. There's so many different departments, like you said, in this organisation that, that you can get that you could get involved in it if you wanted to um it's just it's just looking into it and speaking to people um and finding out what what would you know what would suit you and there's a lot of moving around you can do like i've done i've done a couple of roles whilst being a firefighter in this job already i've, I've only been in for four years um so i've worked with the recruits i've done six months working on recruit courses um as a mentor for recruits so worked alongside the, the the recruits themselves but also the the instructors on the courses just as as a, as a bit of a go-between um and as someone more on the level of of a recruit to kind of confide in so if they had any problems any issues they could come to me and, and i'd kind of help talk them through it and reassure them because you know people who do who who are on the recruit course you know there's different people have come from so many different backgrounds like you could have someone that's come from another emergency service or you could have someone that's come from the military for example that are kind of used to used to the the, the discipline side of things or just used to that kind of environment but then there's people like myself that come from hospitality or teaching or you know outdoors activity you know instructors and just everyone so you just need that that kind of person who, who, who can be on on your your level to be like you know like the, I, I once didn't know what I was doing and and I didn't feel you know I would ever know what I was doing but putting your, your faith in in the instructors and and you know and the service and also yourself and the abilities that you've got because the instructors that I had and the recruit course that I had couldn't do more to help each other. So um, that that was, you know, it, it was great. To, it was great to kind of know that we were all in the same boat. And yeah, it was it was just reassuring because I was a bag of nerves before I started. Um, but now I feel, you know, like I said, I'm still learning, but I'm I'm confident in what I do and I'm confident in the people around me. Um, but yeah, so just take take yourself onto social media. Just have a little look at what we do. Um, and obviously, if you if you're younger and you're doing maybe your GCSEs now, um, concentrate on on getting them done. So you'll need your GCSEs to um to get into the job. So it's maths and English, um, C or above. Um, and then obviously there's there is a level of of fitness required. So you know, bit of running, get get into running, get into a sport, you know, get into a gym now that we can, now that, that, that we're open and, and you know, you can, they have um, days called have a go days where you can, you know, get involved and come down when the, just before the start on the recruitment days so you can have an idea of what to expect on those days. But honestly, it's, it's the best decision I've ever made. It's, it's, it's such a fulfilling job in so many ways and, just to interact with the community and, and the people that I work with. And like I said, the, the biggest the biggest thing for me is, is helping people, but also every day is different. Like you you don't you just don't know what, what you're gonna get and, and that's the most exciting part of, of the job. Um so yeah, Amazing. I think that is that is everything from me. Oh, um, thank you so much. No, um, you're welcome yeah that was that was really interesting um thank you so much for that I personally definitely learned a lot that like I didn't actually I mean I know obviously there's a lot to the whole training part of firefighting but as you said you didn't really you didn't really understand how much before you went into the job um so yeah I'm going to kind of open up questions but um 
I'll kind of start one off if people want to like think about it but um so yeah regards and like the whole training process of it um were there any points throughout that or at any point in your career really um in the fire fighting department like where you felt like kind of given up a little bit and like um if you did like what what did you do to kind of push past that I think um on my training course because like I said it was quite overwhelming and it was all so new to me um that there was parts where I just questioned myself because I didn't come from a background, you know, growing up where I knew a lot about even just like tools and things like that. For example, like I wasn't very handy with with, with (laughs) things, you know what I mean? And even just opening a a toolbox, I was like, what what are all these things? Like (laughs) things before. So like, you know, some people have got like a kind of a a bit of a step a step ahead you know if they've if they've worked in trades and stuff like that before but I'd just be looking at things going what is this like and how do I use it and when am I ever going to use it and you know even just the simplest things like that I was like this is this is quite overwhelming but you know you speak to people on your course and that's the great thing about having so many people from different backgrounds that someone always knows knows the answer and there's always somebody there to like help you out so even on days where I was like oh, I can't I can't do this like I can't I you know like you'd re- be revising every night for like exams or you'd, you'd be having like an assessment because we have to do like assessments for like how to put up ladders and, and things like that and there's like different commands that you have to do when you have to get them in the right order and and, and you know like I, I'd just be like oh this is this is quite scary but you know everyone's on your side but you know it's, you still got to get it right yeah you still, you still got to pass you still, at the end of the day you've, you've still got to pass the same as everybody else and everyone's willing you to pass like the instructors like nobody wants you to fail they just want you they just want to see like the best of your abilities and yeah so it just, just a lot just a lot of encouragement I'd say got got me through my recruit course a lot of encouragement from not only like people who were on me recruit and instructors but also my family and friends and 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 encouragement from myself to kind of know that that I had the ability to do it and just have the confidence to just turn up and just have a go like just just do it just you know it's in there but it, but you know it's so easy sometimes to to be able to talk yourself out of doing something sometimes you've just got to do it and just see how it, how it works out and and you know like nine times out of ten you, you're going to be fine it's all in there you know it because you've worked hard for it um so yeah just a bit of faith faith for yourself and, and, and from everyone else kind of gets you. <laughs> it always helps doesn't it having a bit of faith in yourself yeah yeah um also just um touching on the fact that obviously in um, a few years ago I mean obviously it's a lot better now but it was a very male-based industry would you say in in terms of how did you feel as like a woman or like just going into that industry did you feel like respected did you feel like on the same level as everyone um yeah kind of just along that lines really yeah um I didn't really know you know the percentage of of females that were, were in the job I think now um I'd say there's probably 10 percent of firefighters are female so um it's not a, it's not a massive percentage but it's it's it certainly come a, a long way from when it when it you know time's gone by like that there, there was no one and then there was one and then you know slowly and gradually it started to to increase and I think I had no idea like how how many how many women were in there but for me that didn't matter because when I met my my recruit course and when I met the, in, the instructors I was like well I don't feel like a female or a male I feel like a firefighter and trainer and we're all going through the same process together and we all respect each other and we're all respected the same um and I still feel like that now um you know I've learned so much from females in this job as much as I've learned from males in this job you know like there's there's female role models in this job that I, I've got massive respect for um so yeah I, 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 I've never seen it as as you know a divide ever like I've just kind of fitted in and I think you know 
it can be can be overwhelming because you are in you know previous jobs that I've worked in have kind of been like 50 50 or you know mostly female dominant dominant environments but to go into this it's kind of it's 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 nice it's it's refreshing it's new it's but but it's it's comfortable and it's you know everyone's there to help at the end of the day we're all in the same boat we're, we're just we're, we all do the same job you know we're all as capable as as one another so and the training's there and that's why we continuously do the training to make sure that you know we're all at the same level and we're all able to do our jobs confidently mm-hmm.